The final comment before I let you go for the salah break, which is in a minute, inshallah, just to get the introductory comments out of the way, is that this, uh, this year, when the Makkah was conquered, which is what the majority of scholars say, the, the word Fath in this surah, victory, is referring to Fath Makkah, the conquest and the opening of Makkah. <coughs> when this is mentioned, this year is also called Amal uh, Wufud. This is the year of ambassadors. These ambassadors, these representatives came from many, many, many different places, from Ta'if, from Yemen, from Halazin. They came in groups of 40 and 80 and 100 and 200. And they came and they spent a couple of days with the Messenger, alayhi salatu wasalam. They heard the message of Islam. The whole bunches of them would accept Islam, take it back to their tribes, and the entire tribe would, tribe would become Muslim. So in a very short amount of time, a lot of different ambassadors from all over the Arab world came to meet with the Messenger, alayhi salatu wasalam, in this particular year, and people started accepting the religion, multitude after multitude after multitude. Contrast this with the Messenger going to the people. A, a, de- a decade or two ago, a decade ago, the messenger is going around delivering the message and people are laughing at him. And now the messenger is sitting in Mecca and people are coming to him to learn about Islam. How Allah turns, turns the tides and how Allah Azza wa gives aid to his messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Now just a small historical comment. When Mecca is conquered, first of all it's the only magnificent conquest of its kind which does not lead to bloodshed and violence. Any, any people being overcome by another people leads to bloodshed and violence. But there is none. Handful of skirmishes here and there, but overall there's no bloodshed. Second of all, it is the only incident of its kind where the military doesn't take advantage of its victory and goes and loots homes and executes and this, nothing. Actually the public address is لا تثريبا عليكم اليوم There's no harm that will fall upon you today. These are the words of Yusuf alayhi salam when he overpowered his brothers. And these were the words used by the Messenger ﷺ. There are no parades. There are no dancing in the streets and waving the flag or the tank rolling by. And, you know, there's no footage of that. There's nothing. The only celebration that's being made is the worship of Allah. That's the only celebration being made. Because you know, when, a, when any other army wins, they give credit to themselves and their nation. When the believers win, who do they give credit to? They give credit to Allah. This is not the time to celebrate, this is the time to thank Allah. Even the Messenger enters in a state of sajda. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And the first thing they do is clean up Allah's house. Subhanallah. It's, an, it's a unique victory in the history of the world. It's a unique conquest. We haven't seen any conquest like this in the history of the world. Subhanallah. Now we come to the second ayah. وَرَأَيْتَ النَّاسَ يَدْخُلُونَ فِي دِينِ اللَّهِ أَفْوَاجَ The first word in this ayah is رَأَيْتَ And you saw or you will see, depending on which opinion we take that was mentioned in the first part. You know, a couple of surahs ago, Allah said, Inna أَعْطَيْنَاكَ الْكَوْثَرَ We've guaranteed you the abundant good, the ultimate gift, the greatest good. Part of that good to the Messenger that I mentioned earlier on today, is that the Messenger is extremely concerned sallallahu alayhi wasallam that the people will not believe. So before his life is over, this, his worldly life is over, Allah gives him a gift. You will get to see people entering into the religion with your own eyes. وَرَأَيْتَ is for Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam. It's a continuation of the second person that's been going on in all of these surahs. In all of these surahs, one way or another, Allah is talking to His Messenger. So, the Messenger والسلام, is so worried that people won't believe. They will not believe. فَلَعَلَّكَ بَاخِعُ النَّفْسَكَ عَلَىٰ أَثَارِهِمْ it regards to specifically the Christians, but other places, even other people. Are you going to kill yourself in grief because of the consequences of their, them not believing? In them yu'minu. If they don't come to believe, and Allah gives him a gift, you will watch them believe with your own eyes. So what ayat nas Now, the first message of the surah was the victory of Islam. The second message of the surah is tasbih and hamd and istighfar, specifically directed to the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Let's look at these connections bit by bit. At tasbih wa tathir, tasbih is a means of purification. Tasbih is purification. Now that the house of Allah has been purified of idols, now it is the time to purify the hearts as well. This is the per- perfect time to purify the hearts as well. So one is the purification happening on the outside, the other is a call for purification of what is inside. The fa makes it very clear, the fa in the ayah, fa sabbih bihamdi, fa sababiyya. In other words, because the things that have happened, the victories that have come, because of them you should make tasbih, so the two have been connected. Now, I was thinking when victory comes, the words I was expecting was fashkur, be grateful. 
You know, when something good happens, you thank Allah. But Allah said, make tasbih, declares hamd, and do istighfar. Three things. Then, you know, normally in any other scenario, I mentioned this in passing before, in any other scenario, victory is the time of great arrogance. Victory is the time to say, we did it. We did it. We accomplished it. Get time to give credit to yourself. People will come and congratulate you. In other words, victory is the time when egos are at their highest. And Allah is teaching us, just because you've destroyed idols on the outside, don't forget there's a worse idol inside your heart, and that is arrogance. And this is the time when that idol can be born. So kill that idol by declaring the perfection of Allah and asking istighfar of Him. If that thought even came in your head that we won, we got Him, we're on top, we're number one. If that attitude even came in your heart, get rid of it. Get rid of it. Because that, those idols you can see, this is a more dangerous idol. You can't even see it, but it's there. It's a form of shirk. It is a form of shirk. Arrogance is a huge thing. You know? So this is, this is the other shirk that's being destroyed. If the external means of shirk are being destroyed, make sure the internal means of shirk are also destroyed. SubhanAllah. He's using the messenger as a teacher, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam.